I mentioned in my review of a woman called Fujiko Mini that there's such a push in Hollywood for putting characters of different colors and creeds and genders and whatnot into the spotlight. Writers typically make their identity of what they are who they are. See, they seem to forget in writing a, a good character, they forget how to write an actual good character. Just being a woman or just being of color or whatever, that doesn't make you a good character. That That's just what you are. Like, that's just what you're born as. What makes you a good character is the morals you live by and the actions you take to exact those morals. But all too often we see things like the live-action remake of Mulan. She starts out perfect because she's a woman and she can do anything because she's the best. And that doesn't make for an actual interesting character. What was an interesting character was the original Mulan, who was smart and witty and used raw determination and emotional intellect in, in order to overcome obstacles and different challenges that all the men around her couldn't. That was a good character, not the remake one, where she started out perfect. See, cause it, it doesn't matter what color, creed, what gender, what whatever, it doesn't matter what you are, it matters what your character is, who you are, how you act, the way you affect people around you, your influence. I was thinking about this with female characters specifically. Where does this idea come from that we don't have good female characters in anything? I don't, I've thought like I'm a, I've been a nerd for like you know my whole life. There's a whole bunch of female characters that are great. And just list a few. The boss from Metal Gear Solid 3. She shoulders the entire world. She completely avoids an entire nuclear World War 3 by taking the blame for some shit that she didn't even do. She could whoop everyone's ass in the Metal Gear Solid verse in like hand-to-hand -hand combat for real. Fujiko Mine, uh, again, I, I talked about this in that Fujiko Mine video, but Fujiko Mine is a great character. I don't think it's bad that a, a, a femme fatale is an archetype of a character. A woman getting over on a man just by flashing some cleavage at him, that says more about how dumb we are as men than it does about women. Out of all the wacky shenanigans that happen in anime and video games and whatnot, a woman flashing her tits at a dude to get information out of him, that is the single most realistic thing you will see in any fictional media. Nami, oh my girlfriend. Nami is like damn near the linchpin of the Straw Hat crew. She's like one of Luffy's foremost consoling figures. Not only literally, but figuratively, this dude would not have gotten to where he needs to get without her. Like, there's full blown bad guys this guy would have never even been able to land a punch on if it wasn't for her helping him get to where he needs to go. Faye Valentine's another femme fatale. She can kick just as much ass and is just as intellectual as Spike. One bit of an upper edge on him because she can use her womanly charm to get through. Bayonetta, oh, well, there actually is a little more depth to Bayonetta's character, but I mean, come on, you guys want a woman that kicks ass? It, 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 you don't get much further than the Bayonetta. Cosmos is like this robot cyborg that's also might be Mary Magdalene with I'm all about robot cyborg hot anime chicks kicking ass. Tsunade in Naruto, she's cool. Sometimes when Madara is not beating the dog piss out of her. Samus is a classic example and she doesn't ever have to use sex appeal. Shit, most people don't even know that she is a female to begin with. She's bounty hunting in the middle of space and shooting bad guys and space pirates and aliens and shit in hot lava and it's Tifa Lockhart, my other girlfriend. She's one of the only Final Fantasy characters, especially in Final Fantasy 7, that full-on just uses her hands. Like, look at the sword that Cloud uses, look at the sword that Sephiroth uses, Barret's got a gun on his hand, Red 13's a bioengineered dog creature thing that can use magic, Sid flies a giant airship with missiles and has a giant pike that he stabs people with, Yuffie's got all types of ninjutsu and bombs and star ninja stars that she throws around, and Tifa's just like, yo, I got these hands though. She straight up suplexes the emerald weapon. And she's got a whole bunch of depth that how she connects with her backstory to Cloud. And Yuna's another Final Fantasy character that's absolutely amazing. I mean, talk about shouldering an entire nation, an entire world for that matter. And Yuna was gonna sacrifice herself and didn't even complain about it. Yuna's sick. Mikasa from Attack on Titan. Now, you want to talk about a chick that can kick ass and isn't actually like that physically strong? Mikasa's like on par with Levi in Attack on Titan. The main character of Attack on Titan, Aaron Yeager, he he sucks. Like he he's he's the worst. And his best friend, Armin, like 
I mean, he sucks too. He's like just as bad as Aaron. But Mikasa, Boa Hancock's another One Piece character. She's like the most beautiful woman in all of One Piece. And I'm not just saying it. Like that's like kind of her moniker in the, in the world of One Piece. But the whole Marine Fort arc, she comes through 100 for Luffy. This dude would have never gotten what he needed to get done. She saved his ass so many fucking times. And she's strong as shit. And she's got them sexy leg kicks she'd be doing. Like, oh my god, Boa. Revy from Black Lagoon, she's a complete psychopath. Yoko Littner from Gurren Lagann. It's been a while. I, some of these I haven't seen or played in a while, so I... They, forgive me for not knowing everything. Now, a lot of people think Misa Amani is, like, kind of obnoxious, but she's one of those, like, Harley Quinn-style characters, and actually, while I'm on it, Harley Quinn for that matter, they're these kind of characters that get mistaken for being, like, sort of weirdly psychotic and wanting to destroy the world or whatever, but no, they're actually intriguing in the fact that really just abuse victims by these psychotic, twisted, demented characters that are using them for their own personal gain, it's actually kind of sad, and that's what makes her character character so interesting to watch is you just feel bad when you really think about how she's getting used and she's living her entire life for a dude that's gonna throw her away. Winry, Winry Rock, blah, 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 blah. Winry Rock Bell, main two characters of uh, Full Metal Alchemist, wouldn't be shit without this character. The main character would not have, he literally wouldn't be able to walk without Winry. She's smart as shit and she's always coming through. She's holding them together. Like, I mean, she literally holds these dudes together with like nuts and bolts and shit. Nezuko is like my favorite character in all of Demon Slayer. She doesn't even talk, but through just simple emoting, she's one of the most vital characters. All the other characters are like overly expressive and overly emotional and pretty much downright obnoxious at times. But Nezuko is always like, adorable and kicks the most ass out of anybody when she needs to. Risa Hawkeye, another Full Metal character. This dude, Roy Mustang, he would have been completely psychotic without her by his side. Chun-Li, but you want to talk about one of the most iconic, not only just fighting characters, but iconic characters in gaming, it's Chun-Li, and her whole thing is that she kicks shit really hard. How does every dude still find her sexy and she's got the beefiest thighs on the Street Fighter roster? Ellie from The Last of Us. I haven't actually played The Last of Us. Catwoman, she's the only chick that really gets into Batman's head for real. Epona the horse. Bro, you want to talk about carrying the team? Do you know how much shit Link carries in his pockets? Like hook shots, megaton hammers, bombs, arrows, magic spells, potions, fairies, like an Epona. The second you play that song, it doesn't matter if you're in the desert, it doesn't matter if you're by the lake, it doesn't matter if you're on a mountain, Epona is there, ready for Link to get on with all his shit and carry him across Hyrule. Why does he need to go across Hyrule? He's got warping spells, I don't know, but Epona's there for him. She doesn't question it. She doesn't question shit. Terra from Final Fantasy VI, she's actually a super tragic character. She's the catalyst for all the main events of the game, and I think she kind of gets put on the back burner in some people's minds because she's one of the more soft-spoken characters in the wide cast of Final Fantasy VI characters. An entire apocalypse happens, and it, she's kind of at the center of it all. Ultimicia, or Ultimicia, Ultimicia, I don't ever know how to say it. Her whole thing is she wants to, like, compress time and mesh it all together because all she knows is that at one point in time, she was happy, so she's just gonna fucking compress all of time and fuck it all together. And she's got crazy, insane magic powers and can, like, manipulate people through time. Ava from Metal Gear Solid 3. When I tell you, like, Snake gets shitted on so much in the Metal Gear Solid series, she sexually manipulates the main character, everything that he had been working for. He killed his mentor, and she knew about it. She knew about everything that was going down, and she sexually used him to get one over on him, and then just got on a motorcycle and bounced, and then Snake was sitting at the fireplace. It didn't even look like he was mad that she took all the shit that he worked for. He just got some of the best ass of his life. She's just gonna bounce on him like that? Bro, I'd have been depressed too. Become a fucking global terrorist after that. Garnett in Final Fantasy 9. I, you know what? I wrote her name down and I'm almost having second thoughts about it now. Out of everyone else, she knows more so what she wants. In some of the toughest moments, she kind of shows the most resolve out of all the other characters in the whole cast. I guess from Persona 3, these stories are like really complicated and I can't explain them all in like just a few seconds. I mean, she was literally fighting the incarnation of death. 
Chie from Persona 4. She, she played soccer, right? Or she did volleyball. She kicked shit. I know that. Like, she was dope. Undyne from, uh, what the hell is that game my nephews are always playing? Undertale. I remember I helped my nephew, uh, beat the boss of Undertale, and I, I knew, like, the story of Undertale on the genocide route or whatever. I remember legitimately feeling bad, and my nephew's, like, all celebrating, like, yeah, we beat the boss. And I'm like, no, dude, like, she's the hero, and we're killing her. We, she is the hero in this story that we are the villain of, and we're killing her. Dixie Kong, she's usually the, the optimal player to be because of her hair twirling thing and she's also one of the most highly requested characters to, to to put into smash like she's one of the single greatest platforming characters of all time and she doesn't even get any of the credit luca from chrono trigger all her shenanigans kick off all the events of the plot and more or less uh save everything as well bulma now i know what you're thinking bulma really from dragon ball z but if, if you really think about it back in dragon ball Bulma, she kind of was like the Nami of that era. Like, she was holding shit down for the rest of the crew and making sure they all stayed on the straight. Uraraka, Ura, Uraraka, Uraraka Uchako. She starts out as Deku's just like little crush or whatever, and it's cute and adorable and all that kind of stuff. Haha, ha, yeah, I was 15 once, life sucks after it. Um, no, she's actually super cool, and when shit's going sideways, she jumps up into the fray of shit, and she's like, no, I can't just be this weak little girl, I gotta like fucking hold shit down real quick. Toga, the fucking psychotic chick, I kind of feel like she's what people want Harley Quinn to be, but like in a good way. Then you got Asui, the frog girl from My Hero. Actually, this is like everybody's favorite uh, character, and uh, here we go, people are gonna get mad at me, but like, she's not my favorite of the female characters. I like her, don't get me wrong, she is dope. Also, she's kind of just a frog. That's kind of her whole thing. Another character from Demon Slayer is Mitsuri, the uh, the love Hashira. One of the single strongest Demon Slayers ever. She's actually got a super tragic whole story with the snake Hashira. It's kind of like, damn, bro, like, I didn't know it was like this. Like, she's got a pretty heartbreaking backstory. Circling back to Persona, there's Anne Takamaki. I never really quite figured out what it was I really liked about her that much. Hanji and Sasha from Attack on Titan are two of the most clutch characters in all of Attack on Titan. Like, Hanji's cool because she's, like, kind of stupid as fuck sometimes, but then it's also kind of an act, and then you don't know what she's doing, if she really is excited about some shit, or if she's trying to play dumb to get one up on the on her enemies and shit. And then Sasha, just a fucking badass, just tackling demons without any fucking ODM gear and shit, just with, like, axes and rifles and bows and shit, like, ooh, and in Demon Slayer again, Shinobu, the butterfly Hasha or the insect Hasha or whatever, you're not caught up on the Demon Slayer manga, bro. Uh, when I tell you... Nefertari Vivi is like, when she left the crew, it's one of the most like bittersweet, sad moments of One Piece. Like, she stays behind to make sure her kingdom's gonna stay straight. And no matter what was happening, she always put herself first, sacrificing everything. And she was one of the first people that really taught Luffy what it meant to be more of a diplomatic leader. Nobara. Nobara? Nobara. 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 Nobara? From Jujutsu Kaisen, she's kind of like Sakura from Naruto, but she doesn't suck. Android 18, you know, it's Android 18, like, she's kind of cool. I mean, the only, like, noteworthy thing she ever really did was, like, kiss Krillin on the cheek, get sucked up by Cell, and then Gohan came through and kicked the shit out of this dude's intestines so bad that Cell threw her up whole. And then you were like, where has she been? Like, where's her whole entire body been inside of this dude this whole time? Big Mom has a kind of insane backstory where, like, she cannibalized her own mother figure to get her powers and shit. Yeah, if you haven't watched One Piece, I'm telling you, shit's crazy. But you know how, like, moms say that shit where, like, oh, I'm gonna snatch a soul out of you or whatever, or, like, I could take your soul or what, it was stuff like that. No, she literally snatches people's souls up from under them. Like, they're her kids. Like, she snatches their souls up, and she does this whole thing where she's, like, got all these different kids, and she's got this whole Willy Wonka Disneyland-esque thing going on where, like, she's expanding her territory by marrying off all her different kids and shit. She's kind of fucked up, but also, like, in her own mind, she's a kid that never really grew up or got reprimanded. Conan from, uh, Naruto. I feel like she's an underrated character, just in the sake that, like, Pain gets all the credit. But Conan was holding this dude Nagato down, even to the very, very, very bitter end, when Naruto cornered this dude and was like, all right, I'm gonna give you a good talking to now, mister, because that's what Naruto does. He gives people a stern talking to, like he's their fucking dad. When Obito comes out the woodwork and starts revealing himself as like Madara, Uchiha, and all this, she comes out and starts doing kamikaze moves and shit and trying to blow shit up. 
Like, she wasn't fucking playing no types of games. Nico Robin is the catalyst for my favorite uh, saga in the entirety of One Piece. Her backstory may be the most tragic backstory in all of One Piece. If you're not caught up on the One Piece manga in, in Wano, Robin's a fucking dog. Maku from Soul Leader, she was actually, she's the main character of that whole series. She's the main leading protagonist. She kicks ass, and then Soul Leader ends up sucking, but Maku is still pretty dope. Ryuko from Kill a Kill. Bro, have you not seen Kill a Kill yet? I haven't seen Kill a Kill in a long time, so I actually can't talk about the, like, the inter-mechanisms of how her character works and all that, but I remember it actually being a lot more complex than Chick in a skimpy outfit hacking away with a big sword. Annie Leonhardt, another Attack on Titan character, she was whooping everybody's ass, Titan form or not. And then come the time when fucking Aaron starts uh, fighting Brock Lesnar or whatever, he starts using her moves and literally says, yeah, like, I fought Annie and like, you ain't shit compared to her. Like, bro, this dude is literally Brock Lesnar and he couldn't beat Annie. Sailor Moon, I mean, she's one of the most important anime characters of all time. Chihiro, uh, Spirited Away, anyone? Anyone seen one of the greatest anime films ever made? Princess Mononoke, have we still not seen one of the greatest anime films ever made? Anyone? Izumi from Fullmetal Alchemist. She teaches the main characters everything that they know, and even though she's like got her entire organs completely mangled and fucked up, this woman still comes through whooping ass on fucking homunculus creature things that can harden themselves harder than steel or whatever. She does have like this huge heartbreaking thing about how she pretty much sacrificed her organs to try to bring her dead kid back to life. It's, she's sad, man. Olivia Armstrong, whole philosophy philosophy is that the strong survive and you work for what you want. Doesn't play no type of games, Ed and Al came through on the, oh I'm a state alchemist, I'm here for information. She's a nah bro, shut that shit the fuck down. Get in here, grab a fucking mop. I'm a state, I don't give a fuck what a state alchemist is, you gonna work here motherfucker. Edward was like, I really need this information, like this is like life or death type shit right here and I have letters from other people and she tore that shit up she said I don't give a fuck who you got a letter from bro grab a fucking mop for real it's like that and then that other dude came by and he's like yo you want to be a part of the upper elite when we kill everybody and she's like hey don't ever put your arm on me dog stabs this dude through his arm kicks him into a fucking pile of wet cement and then pours it on top of him is like yo kill this dude bury that dude alive fuck him up I was like yo I never want to work in the, in the northern aspects of this region. Zero Two from Darling in the Franks was actually one of the only saving graces of that show for me. Shura, another one uh, from Blue Exorcist. Again, a show I didn't really like, but talk about a cool character. Selty from Dorawara. She's the only one that's like not really human, so you can't really figure out what's going on with her, so she has one of the most intriguing backstories to kind of divulge in. And in the first episode, she beats a dude up with a motorcycle. Kagome, I, I only put Kagome down because Inuyasha is kind of a classic. And the only reason I put her down was really because I wrote Rin down. And if you don't remember Rin, that was the, the little girl that was oblivious to everything going on around her. And she was following Sashomaru around. And Sashomaru is like Sephiroth, but like in the Inuyasha world. And this little girl is like the only thing that made this dude give a fuck about anything. Like she's the one that gave him a character arc. So I wrote Videl down here because I thought like, okay, Videl, I mean, Videl's kind of underrated right like that's where it hit me like she doesn't actually fight she starts training with with shitty gohan and then she starts fighting this muscle bound dude and i mean real shit like she doesn't even put up a fight like she she flat out gets stomped the fuck out she was getting beat the fuck up like she was from a rival gang and gohan terrible boyfriend mind you watched that shit happen and goku's over there like calm down son what you mean calm down this dude's girlfriend is getting fucking rolled on by a giant bodybuilder dude with Majin superpowers. And you're telling this dude, calm the fuck down? Originally, I was, I was gonna say like, dude, I would never let some shit like that happen to my wife. But then again, I don't think I would have to because my wife ain't no hoe. That wouldn't happen to her. Like, I would have to stop the other person from getting rolled on because my wife, she threw a fork at me the other day because I, I tried to hit her with a roll of wrapping paper. I got a weird marriage, all right? Mako is another one from Kill the Kill, like, but I remember she was trying to keep Ryuko from, uh, 
shot on the straight and narrow the whole entire time. Forgive me for not remembering the name or pronouncing it correctly, but All Might's teacher. I don't know much about her. I'm not caught up in the manga. She's the one who instilled a bunch of the morals into All Might himself, and he's always giving credit to her for teaching him everything. Sasuke from Kill a Kill is someone I, I couldn't leave out because she's originally poses like the big bad villain of the whole thing and then you slowly get to realize that she's really just being manipulated psycho from high school of the dead high school of the dead is just pretty much face value just hot chicks and zombies katara always there for this dude and then she has that really crazy heartbreaking arc where she teams up with zuko and then she learns bloodbending and then she goes on the hellbent mission to like avenge her mother and everything and then there's azula who's like one of the scariest antagonists in this entire series and the only one you're like you thought zuko was bad and this chick comes through shooting lightning out of her fingertips and shit and this is a great fall from grace type of story like seeing a, a, a character that was got way too big for their britches and could not handle the power that they were given driving themselves into complete insanity and then you got Korra and the thing about Korra that's interesting like she's kind of a Mary Sue almost at the beginning but the, that's kind of her big downfall later down the line is that she kind of over relies on the natural talents given to her uh the major from Ghost in the Shell I'm not gonna I'm not I'm, I'm gonna keep it all the way a, a stack with you guys I haven't watched all of Ghost in the Shell I I don't know she's a fucking other person in a different body and whatever and she's trying to figure out what a human is and all that Ghost in the Shell is really filling philosophical series, all right? Aerith Gainsborough. And you remember that part in Final Fantasy VII? Nobody ever talks about this. It's like the dark side of Final Fantasy VII, where, like, Cloud is being manipulated by Sephiroth, throws Aerith to the ground, and just starts fucking punching her in the face. Like, you gotta think, Cloud is a pretty strong dude. Like, he's got this giant slab of iron that he can, like, fly through the air and slice buildings in half with. And he he gets manipulated by Sephiroth to, like, throw a girl on the ground and, like, beat her fucking face in. Do we not remember this part? That's, like, that traumatized me as a kid. But then puts the whole team on her back, goes off on her own, gives you all your equipment back. Like, she's really nice about it. She reorganizes it for you and everything, puts it all in your inventory. Goes out, gets stabbed in the lower spine. But then at the end of the game, she saves the fucking planet. Like, you go and beat Sephiroth, and that's not enough. Like, Sephiroth, he already did what he planned to do. He pretty much won at that point. But then Aerys' spell, her whole praying to Holy and all this shit, that comes through and stops Sephiroth's meteor from falling. Bro, if it wasn't for her, you would have lost. Like, even in death, she beat Sephiroth. And then all for safe measure, all is well that ends well, I had to put Zelda on here. And the only reason I thought not to put her on here originally was simply because I'm like, ah, well, she's kind of just the princess character. That's why I didn't put Peach on here, because she's just the damsel in distress that always has to get rescued by Mario. Zelda's gone undercover, become a secret ninja, and fought battles and shit. Then there's always, like, always, 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 whenever Ganon or his minions or whatever, whenever they come through and they raid the kingdom, because they always do, and it's not like Bowser where, like, he comes in a little happy cup and he just snatches her up real quick and runs away on a pirate ship. Ganon comes through with a whole military. And Zelda's right there on the battlefield. I don't ever see the king of Hyrule. Like, King Zelda or whoever. Like, we don't even ever know his name. He's just the king of Hyrule. It's always Princess Zelda. She's not even the queen yet. Where are her parents? It's always teenage Princess Zelda that is always putting the kingdom on her back. And then in Breath of the Wild, she's the one that for 100 years straight, while Link is asleep recovering, and she's hold the only reason the whole kingdom of Hyrule, the biggest kingdom of Hyrule we've seen to date at this point, the only reason it's not in bigger disarray than it already was, was because Zelda, Princess fucking Zelda at 17 years old, locks herself in an immortal battle with the literal king of darkness and malice holding him in Hyrule Castle with a spell. Meanwhile, Link wakes up, you're over here fucking off and trying to find every shrine and 100% the game and fucking make beef stew and omelets and shit. What are you doing, Link? Go save Zelda already! She's been locked in combat with this dude for a hundred years and you're gonna make a fucking omelet? Anyway, this video went on way longer than I had originally anticipated it to, but if you watch anime and you like video games and comic books and all that, there's actually a lot of amazing, compelling, intriguing, complicated female characters littered all throughout anime, and sometimes, a lot of times, they're more interesting than the male characters. You just gotta be a fucking nerd, alright?